Chicago. The home of Candyman, Porter Guys 3, Home Alone, countless John Hughes movies, and serial killers. Now, of course, when I say serial killers, I'm talking about two in particular. John Wayne Gacy, who was Pogo the Clown, and H.H. H. Holmes, who some say is America's first serial killer who had a murder castle here in Chicago. If you're watching this video right now, you can tell by the title that this particular video is all about the killer, H.H. H. Holmes. We're gonna visit where the murder castle once stood as well as a couple other places. But you know how much I love street art. Now, this area of Chicago isn't really the nicest area to be around, so we're going to kind of move rather quickly, get the shots that we need, tell the story. But we do have a lot of ground to cover, so here we go. The H.H. H. Holmes murder castle here in Chicago actually was set on fire in 1895 and the charred remains stood till 1938 whenever it was torn down. So really, there's not much to see. Well, strike that and reverse it. Pretty much everything that was around the murder castle still stands. I'm gonna show you in just a minute. But what you're looking at right now is a photo of what it looked like and it's all involved in all its glory and its heyday. I'm gonna show you that exact photo again in just a moment. But right now I'm walking down towards the corner of 63rd Street and Wallace. Now, what you're looking at right now, that building to the right, it's a post office. But right about there, at the empty lot just to the left of the building, by the center of your screen, that is where H.H. H. Holmes, his murder castle, once stood. Now I'm going to point out a few different things. Right now I'm standing in the middle of the street. But do you see that metal trellis work right there above the bridge? And then off in the distance you can see that metal bridge right there. Now look at that photo again, but this time pay close attention to those areas. Right where those two trees are, just to the left of the building, that is where the murder castle once stood. And it stretched down a little bit further down there. They tore it down, 1938, and they built this post office on it. If you're watching this video for the first time and you're just learning about H.H. H. Holmes and the murder castle, let me enlighten you. Well, tests confirm remains exhumed from a Philadelphia grave belong to Chicago's most notorious serial killer, Dr. H.H. H. Holmes. In the 19th century, Holmes built his Chicago hotel into a death trap, adding a gas chamber and industrial oven in the basement. It's believed he killed dozens of people there during the 1893 Chicago World Fair, but it was the murder of his business partner that led to his conviction and hanging in Philadelphia. The History Channel series raised doubts that Holmes possibly escaped from prison before execution, but tests confirm the body does belong to him. The murder castle was in Chicago's Englewood neighborhood. It had trap doors, mazes of hallways, and staircases that led nowhere. Inside, Holmes tortured and mutilated people. Now, the story of H.H. H. Holmes, America's first serial killer, there's a lot of legend, there's a lot of lore, there's a lot of embellishment 
over the years. The story, the house, the murder house, the murder castle is stuff nightmares and horror movies are based off of. Now, let me try to cover this. H.H. H. Holmes came to Chicago and he got a job at a pharmacy that once stood right where this building now stands. This is an Aldi's. He worked for a husband and wife here and eventually he did so well that he ended up buying the pharmacy. Now the husband and wife who owned the place somehow surprisingly disappeared. A lot of people after the fact think that H.H. H. Holmes killed them. He took the money he made and he built his own building over there which became the murder castle. Now here's what I mean by that. The bottom floor was shops, like his own pharmacy and the drugstore, things like that. But the top two floors were, think of it like a bed and breakfast, right? Now, the murders all took place right around the World's Fair. The story goes, well, the legend goes, that as H.H. H. Holmes was building his murder castle, he designed each and every room, each and every floor, from top floor down to the basement, with all kinds of booby traps and secret passages and chutes and, and different ways to gas rooms and just kill people, debone them, whatever you can imagine. I mean, stuff that nightmares were made of. Now, as people came into town for the World's Fair, H.H. H. Holmes put an ad out in the newspaper saying, hey, I got this hotel for rent, rooms to rent, come and stay here. So people would come, they would check in, and they would never leave. And then he would dispose of the bodies. <laughs> it gets pretty gory. Now, whether you take it as fact or fiction, legend or truth or lore, it's a doozy. H.H. H. Holmes is rumored to have killed somewhere around 200 people. But at the time that he was caught and he was put to death, he confessed to 27 people, which is odd because most of the people that he admitted to killing were actually still alive. So see what I mean about the stories, the legend, the lore? You never really know what to believe, but one thing's for sure, his murder castle did stand in this spot in Chicago. If we walk towards the back, of the post office. We can't get back in that little parking lot because it's for authorized vehicles only and employees. But you get a better look at that train trestle, which they, you know, they still use to this day. Instead of trains, it's a, a you know, the mass transit system here. But that's it. Talk about history, right? trying to cover this as much as I possibly can from all angles. See what I mean? The bridge is still in use. Even though the murder castle is gone and the post office is still here, and we've read online, we've heard that part of the foundation to the post office is still the original basement from the murder castle. At one point, I do believe they gave tours down there, like around Halloween time. We're gonna go inside, see if they'll let us down there. I highly doubt it, but fingers and bones crossed. But if anything, we're gonna walk around and stand right smack dab in the center of where the murder castle once stood. Pretty crazy, right? You know, while I was standing on the corner filming, Somebody who lives in the neighborhood came up and asked what I was doing and I told him that at one point there was this notorious serial killer that lived here in Chicago right where the post office stood and he had no idea what I was talking about. So I enlightened him about the, uh, the colorful nature of H.H. H. Holmes. This is it. down on this edge. I've seen a lot of people online saying that the post office is actually where the murder castle once was. 
but the old street used to run right next to that concrete wall. So right over here in this area is where it once stood. There's the trestle. So of course, everything's been repaved, curbs have been redone, but the original street back when H.H. H. Holmes was living here would have been right here. It, this is blowing my mind. And basically you're standing at the corner of the murder castle. Jessica was just talking about these murals, the art pieces that are along the rail line here, and how beautiful they are and how close in proximity they are to one of the most notorious serial killers, his creation, his murder castle. I like saying that for some reason, the morbid in me, that how something so beautiful now stands in something that once was so horrendous. I mean, you can see all the tile work. There's a lot of broken tiles on the ground. But this is it, right where I'm standing right now. I would have been in the first floor of H.H. H. Holmes's murder castle. It gives you chills. And we're not gonna walk down the alleyway, but I do wanna just get a little bit closer just to get a better shot of that train trestle. It's still standing after all this time, right? Now, like I said, I don't think they're going to let us down into the basement. We're going to go inside. Maybe we can get a postcard or something, like a stamped envelope from this post office indicating that we were here. Right? This is gorgeous. Oh, it's warm too. So sadly, we can't get down into the basement due to safety reasons, which is understandable, but the original building, turns out, stood as a post office until 1938, and then this location was built. And if you come here, you can see the evidence of this building and its breathtaking architecture. I can't stop staring at it. I can't stop looking at it. I'm looking underneath the desks. I'm looking at the entrance, and I haven't seen something still survive this long in a quite some time and I've, I love all our kids but it's just so gorgeous. So the burned remains of H.H. Holmes's murder castle was torn down in 1938 and this building was built in 1939. And there's some of the, the, the design that Jessica was just talking about. I mean, this place is just freaking beautiful. Man, I wish we could get back behind the post office boxes here and downstairs, but you know what? This is just perfect. Like Jessica was saying, we can't get downstairs because of safety issues. And they did confirm that they used to do tours here, but they stopped. But they did allow us to get this. You see it? It's got the location stamp. How cool is that? And the date. Well, yeah, the month, March 2022. So we visited the site of where H.H. H. Holmes's murder castle was. We got to stand where it was, got to see the bridge that's behind it, go inside the post office. Now there's one other location that I want to visit that is kind of <laughs> adds to the legend. Now supposedly H.H. H. Holmes, he had a business. He was trying to become or convince the people in the neighborhood that he was a professional glass blower. And on the other side of town, he actually had a building, a massive furnace, where it is rumored that he would take the bodies of his victims and burn them to, to dispose of them. So we're gonna go check that out. That building has been torn down, but we're gonna go walk the one-way street and see if there's anything there that's uh, worth a look at. About 20 minutes away on the other side of town from where the murder castle once stood is a one-way street known as Seely Avenue. Now, back whenever H.H. H. Holmes was living here in Chicago, I think it was called Sobieski Street, and it's undergone 
a bunch of different names, but today it's called Sealy. Now to give you a good idea where we're at, because this is kind of hard to find, we're pretty much on the intersection of Sealy and Fullerton. Now this is the kind of thing that I absolutely love. Whenever history changes so much, it's unrecognizable. Now what you're looking at right now is a relatively new apartment complex, condos if you will. Beautiful, right? But here's the thing, where that building now stands, this is where H.H. Holmes had his glass blowing company, his furnaces, where it is rumored where he would bring the bodies of his victims and burn them, cremate them, so to speak, to get rid of the evidence. How many people live here in this dream building and have absolutely no idea of the morbid history that happened right here on this property? And again, it's just a legend, it's lore, but what if it's true? Now, once again, there's really no address to this place. You just kind of have to know where to look. Now, we found it because a couple years ago, whenever they were tearing down the glass blowing building, the furnaces to build this place, somebody came out here, a local historian, and took photos. Now, even though everything has changed, based off of those photos, we know that it's here. And I'm gonna show you the photos, I'm gonna point out the buildings, so you know that we're in the right spot. It's a dead end street, but this place is busy as heckins. Now in the photos I'm gonna show you, you're gonna see a bunch of digging. Now, where this apartment building now stands, in these photos, it is an empty lot. But behind the empty lot, you can see this metal building right here. It kind of looks like a greenhouse, but it's not, I'm not entirely sure what it is, but it is metal. And then you see that tan building right down there? You can see that in these photos as well. So that pinpoints this new building that's to the left of your screen as where H.H. Holmes had his glass blowing business, his furnaces, where he supposedly brought his victims. Crazy, right? Like I said, I just love how history changes so much that you can't even really tell what was once there so long ago. But then you find little things like this. Again, that building, that apartment building, as well as, I don't know what you want to call it. It's like a, a ribbed, finned building that just kind of gives you a little hint as to what once was there. This is the exact reason why I love doing these videos, walking history, finding pieces of history, no matter how good or how bad or how tragic and disgusting they may be, just walking them and just remembering, not glorifying, but just remembering. You, can, it, you should never forget history. You should learn from it, right? But we say it all the time, good or bad, history is history, and you need to remember it. You, you just have to. With that being said, from Chicago, thank you for joining us on another grim adventure, this time searching the locations, the real life locations of H.H. H. Holmes. Happy Halloween. Wherever I come, I've had luck. Just come my way. Wherever I go, hard luck. Is that it's day? Good luck never stays a day. A bad luck's always coming my way. 